This video is sponsored by Milanote. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and today's video is for anyone that has a tiny corner or nook in their home that they just don't know what to do with. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I focus on renter friendly decor, simple changes you can make to make your space feel really beautiful. If this sounds like something that you wanna know more about, make sure you hit that subscribe button and join us here at Team AG. Are you guys ready? Let's get started. Today I am helping Taylor transform this little alcove off of her living room into a reading nook, a cozy library. Taylor submitted her living room, but once I saw it, I was like, no, this is definitely two spaces. And I feel like so many people can relate to having a little awkward den or nook off of their living space that they just don't know what to do with. So that's the space we're gonna be tackling today. In an upcoming video, we are transforming her living room into a mid-century modern dream. So if you've ever wanted to know how to incorporate elements of MCM into your decor, make sure you stay tuned for that video. We were actually supposed to film both of these spaces at the same time and just split them into two videos, but we ran into a couple mishaps. I hate it already, it's not even open. That's a no. I don't know who has ceilings that are like 18,000 feet tall, but. <sighs> we are filming the living room and making it over very soon. I cannot wait for that one. So as always, before I started planning this little nook, I jumped on a call with Taylor just to get a sense of what she envisions for this space. Okay, so starting with your nook, I wanted to know what your vision was for this space originally and like what your dream like nook would be, I guess. I'm a pretty like avid like reader and I always saw it as kind of like a separated space that kind of be like transitional, to, like read and spend time. Cause right now when I come home from work, I literally just basically ignore my living room because it's so sad. Um, and, and then I go into my bedroom and I just like to sit on my bed and do like my nightly rituals of like reading for three hours on my bed. So always thought of it as like a kind of like a separate sacred space for that. I also feel like it's everyone's dream to have a separate little reading nook, you know, like a built-in bench, like a window seat. I don't know. There's something like really romantic about a little like reading nook. I didn't read a single book before like COVID started. And then I was like, oh, like, what am I going to do with all my time? Like last year I read like a hundred books. This whole my year is 200 books. So we're 47 in. So we're, we're doing it in my bedroom, but it'd be nice to do it. 47 books since January? Yeah. My manager, Amanda, is like, good for you. We've read like one and a half books since January. I tried to find like a friend to do a book club with and I'm like, oh, we can do like one book a month. And she's like, I can't do one book a month. And I was well, like, oh. <laughs> I guess it's a time for you to like really relax and unwind, but what would be your must haves in this little nook if we were to turn it into a reading nook? I think just like cozy, having some light, that's always a positive, very, very bare basics. The main living space is like more of like a space for people to sit together and then kind of having just like this separate space that's like cozy and kind of like more mine, if that makes sense. So it's like away from like the community space. Okay, well that's great because I've been like mulling it over. I've been thinking about it. I'm gonna use color to really divide the two spaces because I feel like in your living room, we're really leaning into like the mid-century modern which isn't cold necessarily, but you're using more cool colors. And so in the nook, I really want to make it feel separate, but still like, still the same space, like an exception. Style adjacent, yeah. <laughs> exactly, but much more cozy and just like warm and inviting. So I'm glad we're on the same, we're on the same page. <laughs> I can't wait to show you what we come up with. Awesome, thank you, Alexandra. Okay, bye. Bye. 47 books, you guys. 47 books since January. I thought I was doing great just by finishing like two, you know? I'm like, okay, I'm coming to the end of my second novel. Great. Reading's stupid anyway. Only people who can't read say things like that. A reading nook is like a no brainer. This is what this space needs to become. On that note, let's talk about the plan for this nook. 
I get so many questions, so many comments, so many DMs asking me, what program do you use to move forward? And here at Team AG, we use Milanote exclusively to plan all of our makeovers. But what I love about it is that it's so much more than just a mood board platform. It's actually a project management tool for creatives to organize and plan every element of their project in a really flexible and visual way. You'll notice that we have tabs for before photos, measurements, inspo photos from the client, our own inspo photos. We have a mood board section. Everything is here on the homepage for this dedicated project. One aspect of Milanote that I love and use all the time is the ability to actually save products or inspo photos from Pinterest directly into the project I'm working on. We also used the color palette feature. So Milanote will pull colors from your existing mood board and give you actual color swatch suggestions. My team and I can also communicate directly into the board so we can ask each other questions, leave comments. It's just like all concise and an easy way to just keep everything organized. The best part is that it's free, which is so awesome. If you want to learn more about Milanote, all the information will be below in my description box. The elements in this makeover are a built-in bench, these floating shelves to hold tons of books, lots of cozy pillows, a mid-century modern inspired wall sconce, a bold, rich paint color paired with mustards and blacks and whites. The idea behind this nook is to make it look like this stuff has been here forever, that it's like truly just like built into this space. If you watch these videos every Saturday, first of all, thanks. But also, you probably have noticed that we have a new face around here. He's been around for a while, but he is officially a part of Team AG. Yay. Hi, Graham. What? Oh, <laughs> I am so awkward. He handles all of the DIYs at Team AG. So he's just a perfect addition to the team and is helping us make these videos just like bigger and better than they've ever been before. And I am thrilled about it. Hi, Graham. Okay, so we're heading into prep and first things first, Graham is making these little cubbies for the bookcase. To make the floating boxes, Graham is taking a piece of pine from the hardware store. He's cutting it down to size and basically starting to make each little cubby. We are doing various sizes. Alana gave him a whole amazing plan. Hashtag women in STEM. She's an architect. So he had like a roadmap to kind of guide him when he was making all the different sizes of cubbies. Now that Graham has cut everything down to size, he is gluing everything together with wood glue, using a brad nailer to secure the boxes, and then clamping it all together to hold it while it dries. Graham is now using wood filler to fill the nail holes and any gaps in the wood. Now he is sanding the whole thing down with an orbital sander, basically an electric sander to make everything nice and smooth. Next, he's using a keyhole router to make little holes on the back of each box. This is how the boxes are going to sit flush on the wall. So we're gonna hang them with little screws, just as you would hang a picture. Guys, I need to read this out loud. This is a note from Graham. Actually very helpful. While these tools were used, you can use finishing nails and a hammer instead of a brad nailer. You can weigh the boxes down with books or rocks instead of clamps, and any sort of sanding block or sandpaper will work just as well if you don't have these particular tools. Thank you, Graham. Making DIYs accessible to all. So now that he has the whole thing sanded, it's all dry, Graham is just priming it with a simple white primer. We are going to paint the boxes on prep day. I cannot wait to reveal the color we're using IRL in real life. But for now, Graham is moving on to the bench. So for the bench, Graham is basically building a larger scale of these boxes to create a custom bench that fits right under the window. I wanted it to sit right in that corner of the nook so that Taylor could just like lounge by the window in the summer, she can have it open, what a dream. Benches like this are not always that comfortable. You can't like splay out on them, but Graham is gonna make this as wide as possible based on the measurements of the nook. Also, shout out to Team AG's unofficial member, Gord. Gord is Graham's dad. You'll see Gord helping Graham a lot in upcoming videos, and we love Gord. Round of applause for Gord. Guys. Thank you, everyone. Graham made some lids for the bench. 
I really wanted to make sure there was lots of storage. She could put pillows in here, blankets, whatever she wants. Just like so good to have extra storage. Graham is using a hole saw to make a little circle so that she can easily take the lids off, like a little handle, yeah? One thing that was really important to me was to add an element of fluting to the bench. I just thought it would make it look like really custom, really high end. The thing is, half rounds are really expensive. I feel like this is different in the States. Like I think it's just a Canadian problem that fluting is expensive. To solve that, Graham just took some pine, literally just cut strips of it down. So you don't get that arch fluted look, but I still think it does the trick and it just looks like really sleek and profesh. And it's a fraction of the cost. So he's using construction adhesive to adhere these to the bench and using one of the pieces of pine to make sure there's equal distance between each strip. Once they are adhered to the bench, he's using a brad nailer and just securing everything in place. While Graham is prepping all the DIYs, Alana and I are taking a trip to HomeSense, one of our fave places, just to gather everything that we need for styling out this nook. As always, there's just like, there's too much good stuff here. What are we gonna use it for, you ask? No clue. What about this room divider? These are actually really nice too. Okay, but we're looking for specifically accessories for Taylor's bookshelves. So I need to focus, refocus. We don't know what we're using this for, you guys, but we're using it for something. So. You're coming home with me. <laughs> This is just cool. I think this is gonna look really good at a textured moment. This is cool too. Yeah. <laughs> Helena and I both picked this up, so yes, this for sure. Ooh. This is cool. Very eclectic. got all of our accessories. Graham has done the DIYs. Let's head into day one. Hey guys, it's day one prep day. I wanted to take this opportunity to show you the whole space because as I mentioned, we will be making over the living room, which is really exciting. But the nook that we're working on today is attached to the living room. So let me, let me show you. Also, please excuse all the boxes. <laughs> this is what a makeover prep day looks like. Okay, so this is the living room. It leads into this little nook, which we are going to be working on today. Most of the day is gonna be spent painting, which is why I have my painting overalls on. My plan for this space is we're going to paint the walls sulking pink, and then we're gonna bring in Graham's floating bookcases and bench, and we're gonna paint it all the same color. So it's really just gonna look like very built in. Like this nook was always a little reading nook. It's sulking room pink, not sulking pink. First thing we're gonna do is tape a line on this wall because this wall juts out into the living room and I really want to make the nook feel separate from the rest of the space. So what we're gonna do is end the paint like here to meet this wall. So we're gonna like make a nice crisp line with painter's tape and then just paint from here all around the nook. This is just a really easy way to create like a visual divide. So when people walk into this space, they're gonna be like, oh, that's a separate little nook area, separate from the rest of the living room. Cause we're not painting the living room, we're leaving it the crisp white that it is. So first we are measuring the distance of where we want the paint to end. We are using a laser level to get a really crisp dead on straight line. You can also use a large level with a pencil and I am putting painter's tape along that straight line. Then I'm going in with a small paintbrush and I am using just simple white paint and painting all along the side of the tape. This is gonna seal everything in and it's going to give us the perfect crisp line once we peel that tape off. We are now taping off the rest of the nook to prep it for painting. You don't wanna miss this step, it's very important. I'm just amazed by us. <laughs> okay, what Amanda's referring to is this beautiful bench that Graham built with his dad. <gasps> I just, I'm obsessed with this color. So beautiful. It's like a purpley pink with gray undertones. Yay! So yeah.
a blank canvas like this can actually be really intimidating, especially when it's a small nook that you have like no idea what to do with. So my tip for you is to start with paint and pick a bold color. I think experimenting with color in a really tiny space like this is such a great way to like venture into the world of color and there's no harm in going bold because if you hate it, you can just paint over it and start again. First coat is done. It's very streaky. We definitely need another coat, but it's looking so good and it just really warms up this little nook. And then over here, we've got all of the shelves being painted. I'm gonna jump in and help with this. And then we gotta move on to the bench too. Because Graham sealed and primed the shelves, the paint is gonna sit really nicely on top of the pine and the pine's not gonna absorb it. So you always want to prime. It just like leaves a really sleek, nice finish and it's gonna like hide all the knots in the wood. No, that looks amazing. Graham! Yeah. Hot tip if you are painting anything fluted like this bench, we are using a toothbrush, thanks to Gord, and we're getting globs of paint in between the cracks and then just like brushing it through with the paintbrush. And that way we're just like really getting in those cracks and making sure everything is painted in the sulking room paint. Now Alexandra's left to paint alone. <laughs> Thank you, Gord, for the toothbrushes. We really appreciate it. Guys, if we ever make over your space, those of you who are watching, look for a little note from Team AG. Graham started this tradition. Look at that. That was a wild day of painting. I'm gonna show you where we're at. Lots of boxes, beautiful bench. The space is all painted. It's looking so good. Thank you, I work so hard. <laughs> you do work hard. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, painting. BTS. Yeah. But we're gonna end the day here and I will see you guys tomorrow for a meal day. Hey guys, it's day two. We're back at Taylor's. All the paint has dried. Everything looks so, so incredible. The natural thing to do next is to peel off all the tape ASMR style, because we are an ASMR channel. No. You didn't like that? Well, we're not, but. <laughs> <laughs> that line. Graham. Graham, the line. Have you ever seen a crisper line in your entire life? The answer is no. Wow. It looks like two separate walls. Oh yeah. It looks amazing. I love it. Oh, so good. This is a really good tip. If you have a big open space and want to divide it, do what we did with this, with the line, the crisp line. You can feel how crisp it is. Like you can feel the line. Okay, I'll stop. So I'm over here trying to give you guys the ASMR that you want and that you deserve. And my team is explaining Wordle to Graham. I'm going to five letter words or less. <laughs> I got it in two today. today. You're doing good. Can everyone like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time to bring the bench in now that it's dry. I also wanted to point out that Graham kind of curved the back edge of the bench so that it sits really nicely on the baseboard. I'm gonna put the storage tops on and then we're gonna move on to the floating shelves. I guess Graham and I are just gonna hang them one by one. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> We're gonna get the laser level. We're gonna tape it all up. And because there's keyholes on the back, essentially we just need to hang two screws and then just hang the box right on the wall. We're just gonna keep doing it row by row, box by box. Long Everyone's, everyone's floating. <laughs> Are you filming? Yeah, you told me to. Okay, great. No, good. I want you to. I just. Yeah, editors are gonna hate you for this, just so you know. 
glass box. Yes. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It looks so good. Wow. Okay, as much as I just wanna like prop all of these shelves right this second, I think we need to work on the cushion. So I found these seat cushions from H&M Home for less than $50. And what's wild is one of them fits pretty much the exact length and width of this bench. Also, can we just take a minute to appreciate the mustard and purple? It looks so good. But then on this side, we have like a bit of an overhang. So Graham is going to open the cushion up and then sew it. So it's gonna feel like a built-in cushion. We looked into getting a cushion actually made with foam and fabric. Turns out that it's really expensive. So this is a great alternative. Source some seat cushions, cut them down to size, and you'll have a custom cushion for the fraction of the cost. He's also adding the tassels. So now we truly have a custom sized cushion that fits this bench. You match the scarf. I can't. It's the same fabric. Yeah, I know. So it's no surprise that Taylor has a lot of books. This is meant to be like a little mini display of her newest reads, the ones maybe she wants to get to. Taylor has lots of other spaces in her apartment to store books. And I knew going into this that this wasn't gonna be filled with shelves. It was really just gonna be like a display of her latest picks finds and reads. If you do want to see a makeover where we did floor to ceiling book storage, just like filled the room with books, I'm going to link the video up here because that was a good one. To display these books, I'm sorting things by color. So there's like a blue cubby, a pink cubby, a black cubby. I feel like sorting books is very controversial. Taylor didn't have her books in any sort of order. They were just literally sitting on the floor. So I kind of took the opportunity and ran with it. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite way to display books are. I know that there's lots of varying opinions. Now it's time to prop the shelves with our beautiful HomeSense finds, like this sculpture, so cool. I'm also placing a Lottie candle. If you guys didn't know, I have my own candle in collaboration with the brand Cardea Oset, a woman-owned small business. I've been a fan of them forever. All the info will be linked down below. We are hanging this light on the wall from Article. I love this light, it's so classic. It has like a bit of a mid-century modern style to it. Bonus, it plugs in so we don't need to hardwire it to anything and we are just trailing the cord behind the bench and plugging it in so the cord is kind of hidden. I love that Taylor is able to pivot it towards the living room or the nook depending on where she is in the space. I'm putting those mustard cushions on the bench, they fit perfectly. Thank you, Graham, for altering those. And now it is time for the finishing touches. Throw cushions, probably the most important element to make any space look cozy. And I'll kind of show you what I'm doing here and what my rule of thumb is when it comes to pattern. So even when you're working with a small space, like a sofa or a nook like this, you wanna put more than just two cushions down. It's totally okay to mix patterns, but you wanna make sure all the colors or tones are kind of similar, like there's an underlying thread to all of the cushions, even if they're varying patterns, but the same color family is really important. Make sure you have a couple cushions that are in a solid color. You don't want like 10 different patterns because that's just gonna look really busy. You want at least two solid cushions to anchor everything together. We are hanging this cute print. Brings in the elements of the blacks and the whites from the cushions and it's just simple but graphic. I love it. We are also hanging this print from Minted, throwing in a new color, some red. Looks so good against the purple. And this is kind of leading us into the living room, which as I mentioned, is a space we're gonna be tackling in a couple weeks. So it's just nice to have this here as like a bold pop of color. We are hanging a disco ball from the ceiling, hanging a little homage to T-Swizzle, if you know, you know. And with that hung up, it is time to bring in Taylor. Okay. Can you walk me through, Taylor, what this little nook looked like before? Um, well, there was nothing in here, so it was absolutely barren. So that was what was there before. One, two, three. Oh my God. <laughs> ah! Oh my gosh. Like, what? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why am I crying?
I don't even have words, Alexandra. This is like what you like dream of. I, I can't even dream of this. This Aww, is like. Oh, this is so nice. Just like, like what? <laughs> I'm like speechless. Yay. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks so much to Milanote for sponsoring this video. Use the link in my description box to sign up for a free account. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye. 17.83 inches is like, you gotta like carry the two and like. Carry the two? Or like. Yes. <laughs> I need to leave. <laughs> I'm leaving. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>